Hello, and welcome to Ryark. In Ireland, we tend to take nuns for granted. They've always been here, and they always will be here, in convents, in hospitals, and in schools. But in fact, nuns haven't always been here. Most Irish convents only came into existence at the end of the penal days, and that's only about 200 years ago. And there's no guarantee that they always will be here. With the decline in vocations today, with the influence of materialism, there's no guarantee that convent life is going to continue as it is at the moment. The whole idea of it is being questioned. Tonight, in the first of two programmes, Ryak takes a look at the place and the image of the nun in the Ireland of today. In the past, nuns have not worried very much about their image. They knew the job they had to do, and they got on with it, to the greater glory of God and for the good of their fellow men. But recently, they have had to become more conscious of their image, not from vanity, but from necessity. If the work they are doing is to continue, they must be able to attract young people into their ranks, young people who see the way nuns work and live, and who like what they see. Today, these young people seem to be coming forward in fewer and fewer numbers. Is it because they no longer like what they see? Or is it because the image of a nun is no longer an attractive or an inspiring one to the girl who is planning her career in life? It depends on what you consider to be a nun. Because, um, at least if you were to take them here, there's a very wide spread, you know, there's one at one, or both extremes, you know, and there's very few in between. You know, there's some people who are really them, and yet they're nuns, and yet there's the old fogies, the typical old ones that you've got to get everything out of the Bible and the Holy Book and the Archbishop, you know? Mm. Well, would you like to be a nun? If I could be me, I would, very much. It interests me because, um, well, I think... Although a lot of people sort of hold it against nuns, that they're nuns and they've got a little black habit logged out to their feet and everything, you can get close to an awful lot more people. And, you know, like here in the cross section, there's an awful lot of girls. There's so, much, so many people in the school, you know, that you can meet more and get to know what they're like. Well, what do you think of nuns in general? In general, they're a bit queer. They're, you know, they're... Um, I don't really know how you could describe a nun. I've heard off definitions, but I don't think they're rather suitable, you know. <laughs> this, um, generally, uh, no, I don't like them. Well, do you think they're really necessary? No. Why not? Because I think you can do just as much um, without being tied up in an institution. In, you know, with uh, one woman up on top of you, one woman saying, you can't do this, you can do that, you know? So. Well, what changes would you like to see made so in nuns' lives? I'd like to see the idea of the habit brought far more up to date. I don't like the idea of a long black habit that's just totally irrelevant to life. I mean, who's going to see with going around with the black veil? Okay, so the frock isn't because it, they're having so much maxis now, but I mean, the idea of a veil is thoroughly ridiculous. Most of us first come into contact with a nun on our first day in school. It is a strange and solemn occasion for all concerned. The desks, the schoolroom, the presence of so many children in the same place. And one of the strangest parts of it all is the first close-up look at a nun. Dressed in black from head to foot, she creaks and rustles and clanks alarmingly whenever she moves. And in general, she is one of the most alarming aspects of a pretty alarming day. With her rosary beads and crucifix, her strange veil and headdress, and her heavy black clothes that seem to smell perpetually of a mixture of crayons and chalk. And open your boxes of crayons. Now, I want you to draw a little nest for me, and draw... As time passes, of course, the strange becomes familiar. These girls will spend between 10 to 14 years in daily contact with nuns listening to them, watching them, getting to know the human beings that lie under the black veils and habits. They will find out that nuns are not superwomen, that they have their own individual characters and their own individual faults, that they are capable of meanness and spitefulness and injustice in the same way as anyone else. But they will also see something of the dedication of the life of the nuns, the dedication that has led them to give up material comforts and possessions to renounce all hope of a home and family of their own. 
the more thoughtful among them will realize something of the extent to which the world of today is indebted to the sacrifice and devotion of the women in black. I think some nuns are really marvellous people and um, as people they go out and they really do marvellous work. Take the nuns in Biafra or take any of the nuns that are helping in hospitals and helping people. I think this is very important and um, sometimes they can be, I know, a little stuffy and rather old fashioned but on the whole I think nuns are pretty good people. Well, do you think they're really necessary? Yes, I do. I think they are necessary. I think they fulfil a role. Uh, in society. It's hard to imagine it, say, in the present day, but why would we be, uh, say, in education, in hospitals or anything, except for nuns? I really think, that, you know, they've played a very important part.